This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. Well, hello, neighbors. My name's Sean, and I'm one of the pastors here at North Cross, and it's my joy to welcome you to North Cross Online, a chance for us to worship together wherever you are, whatever you're doing. We thank you for joining us right now. We know that God transcends time and space, and so we just thank you for using this technology to experience worship with us. To that end, I'm going to invite you, if you're on Facebook, give us a like there on Facebook. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel if if that's where you're watching. One of the best ways to participate in worship with us online is to open up the North Cross app. On the app, there are a number of tools, ways for you to engage with us in worship. And so I'm going to invite you to do that right now. If you have not already downloaded the app, wherever you get your apps, you can find the North Cross app. Go ahead and get that downloaded, open it up. And if you do already have it, 
I'm going to invite you to go to the Connect card right now. It's right there on the front screen, I think like the second or third button down. Connect card. Click on that button and then fill that out. Let us know who you are. Let us know how we can connect with you. What is it you're looking for here in a church with a community of faith? Whatever that is, we're going to be uh, praying with you and for you that we can take next steps together. As we enter into worship now, will you pray with me? Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for today. Thank you for the ways in which you have given us time and space and technology. Thank you for worship. God, I thank you for each and every one who is participating with us now. Because God, I know that you are active and present right where they are at. And God, because you are there, they can respond to your spirit. Help us all to open ourselves now to that gift. We give you our worship. May you fill us with your grace, your love, your light. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, it is time to worship. I invite you to stand where you are if you're able and comfortable. Join in singing My Lighthouse. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore.
a good word it is to know Christ is our light and our salvation. We have nothing and no one to fear with that good news and that assurance. And because of that good news, we sing today. Let's sing, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Jesus, thank you for loving us with a love beyond all we could imagine that is deeper than any love that we know on this earth. I pray that when you speak, we would listen to your voice and that we would receive new life. That our mournful, broken hearts might rejoice at the sound of your voice. Lord, when we sing your praises, we're offering prayers to you of who we are and, and where we are in the world, how we hope to see you and, and hope to see your Holy Spirit move among us, praising the wonder that is the greatness of God. I lift up now those of us who have heavy hearts today, who are feeling 
mournful and broken. We offer these precious people and situations to you that you might offer comfort, offer hope, and offer healing. God, we give you glory and praise. We sing and we hear your word. And we want to know you more. I pray that today we would do just that. We could draw close to you, shutting out the outside world for a few moments to focus on your son, Jesus, his message of hope and light, his offer of new life. I pray for Pastor Sean that uh, you would be, your spirit would be on him, that you would anoint him to speak your good word today. And that you would be preparing our hearts to receive that word. Open our ears and our eyes. Humble us to receive this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So friends, if you've been following along, you know that we've been in this favorites series. Today, uh, as we end the series, as the, as the kind of the culmination of the whole experience, we are recognizing our teachers. So this whole weekend, we just have Teacher Appreciation Weekend. And so I hope that right now you're thinking of your favorite teacher. It could be somebody that you are currently connected to or maybe somebody that uh, was a teacher once upon a time. I hope it's somebody that you still have an opportunity to have a relationship with. I'd love for you to uh, just type the name of that teacher in the comments if you're able to do that. If not, just uh, call to mind that teacher. Think about that relationship. It's not easy being a teacher, and I'm going to suspect that uh, the teacher you're thinking of right now as your favorite would agree with that. They are often underpaid and overworked. There's never enough time to use the restroom or to eat lunch. They juggle the demands of parents and students and elected officials. Aside from all that, teachers do the work. They are incredible, at least most of them. If we look in Scripture, we find teachers are not always presented favorably. In fact, there are, they are frequently accused of teaching the wrong things in unhelpful ways. A notable exception is Jesus. Of the 90 times Jesus was addressed directly in the Gospels, those stories of Jesus' life, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, of the 90 times Jesus was addressed directly, 60 times he was called teacher. Perhaps Jesus' greatest lesson, his, his greatest example of teaching, we know as the Sermon on the Mount. You can find that particular lesson, that particular teaching, in Matthew's telling of Jesus' life. Again, that's the first gospel account, the first story of Christ in our Newer Testament. Matthew chapter 5 through 7 is that Sermon on the Mount. At the end of the teaching, we read this. This is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 28 to 29. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. The crowds, after hearing Jesus' sermon, after hearing his lesson, after hearing this teaching, were amazed he taught as one who had authority. So what was so different about Jesus' teaching here? But before we answer, let's note again, it is not possible to overstate the importance of teachers. Our first teachers are often our parents, and they hold a significant and valuable place in our life. 
Even when we head to school, they continue to teach us. Coming alongside those who are formally recognized as our teachers then, our parents continue to be teachers with us as we go. Throughout life, we have a number of people who kind of come in and out of our lives. We have mentors and coaches, and, and even after our formal education, they continue to teach us in real and powerful ways. You know, while we can learn much on our own, it is teachers who show us how to learn. It is teachers who spark imagination, encourage exploration of the unknown, name possibilities, and shape futures. Yes, they introduce us to facts and formulas, the building blocks of language and the fundamentals of art, how the world works and why it matters. But more than providing information, the real work of teachers, at least in my opinion, is formation, the shaping of lives, the creation of new worlds. So, so this weekend, we are recognizing our teachers, and we have invited uh, some to uh, participate with us. We've tried to reach out to them and connect with them, and, and if you have an opportunity to be part of what we do here at North Cross physically, we're going to invite you to celebrate those teachers with us in the flesh. If not, I want to invite you to, to write a note, to find a way to reach out to your favorite teacher, if it's possible still to do so, and let them know how much you value them, how much uh, you appreciate them. Again, uh, for me, some of the people you're naming, um, I know in my own case, I can think of a particular teacher who, who, I, who I think, although I've had many teachers, I would say this teacher had the most impact in my life. Again, not just information, but formation given to me with this particular teacher. The one that I think formed me the most was Ron Jackson. Mr. J, as we called him, had to, had to work, so he's not going to be able to participate with us uh, live uh, when we celebrate our teachers. But I had an opportunity to, to reach out to him and connect with him. And, and Mr. J, if you're watching this, thank you again for being such an incredible influence in my life. To tell you a little bit about Mr. Jackson, uh, he was my debate coach. Now, debate coaches are a special class of teachers. Imagine a youth group, if you know of such a thing, that spends its time together literally arguing about everything all the time. That's, that's a debate team. That's a debate squad. We would leave for tournaments on Friday, generally before the end of the school day. And we would return late at night, sometimes very late, only to gather back very early on Saturday mornings to, to again then spend the whole day together. While we didn't have tournaments every weekend, we competed as often as we could, so many weekends were spent in just that fashion. There were many late nights, many early mornings, bus rides to strange schools and invading fast food restaurants. Now, while Mr. Jackson taught me logic and reasoning, how to organize and deliver a speech, how to present myself professionally, how to inform and persuade and entertain. The real lessons and the reason why I lift him up as, as a teacher I want to celebrate today, the real lessons were much more personal. Mr. Jackson most fundamentally taught me that I was worthy to be loved. Just as an example of that, I mean, there are many examples I could give, but let me just give you one example of, of how that was communicated to me. After graduation, when I had lost my way and dropped out of college after a miserable first semester, Mr. Jackson called me and asked if we could meet. We did meet, and we talked about life. We talked about my life and what was going on. He encouraged me to, to reapply to a different university. He reminded me of who he saw me as and what he knew I could become. I did apply to that university. I did have a restart to my college experience. Friends, that is what good teachers do. 
They offer the care, the compassion that encourages us to fulfill our potential, even when we cease formally being their student. This is what is different about Jesus. The other teachers of the law spent their time reminding the people how they had failed. Their teaching was about pointing out all the ways the people didn't get it right, didn't measure up, didn't count. Jesus' teaching, again, if you go back and read the Sermon on the Mount, if you read through the gospel accounts of his life, you'll find Jesus' teaching is about living a new life. A life that Jesus said we had been made to live. Blessed are those, he says, who have been told you don't matter. You, sitting right there on the hillside, he says, you are the ones who will change the world. Be salt, be light. You can help others experience God. Let me remind you, we can do it. We can live together. Your life is significant. It has meaning. And then he shares the classroom rules. If you read the Sermon on the Mount, there are some things about how we're meant to be together. He talks about how we're going to line up and what lunch will look like. He points out all the ways we get to care for one another. That's what's happening in this teaching, this Sermon on the Mount. The message is we count, we matter, we are loved And we can use our life helping others learn that lesson. You see, when we're talking about teaching with authority, as the crowds claim Jesus did, it isn't about how masterfully we communicate a particular subject or how effectively we present a lesson plan. All the teachers watching right now, I know You have standardized tests, rubrics, curricula, objectives. You have measures and counts that you're held accountable to, that you have to pay attention to. You are are being recognized this weekend, though, for far more than that. We appreciate teachers. We thank you for all the ways you have challenged, inspired, and invested in us for teaching us that we matter and are worth teaching. Thank you for your sacrifice, for your commitment, for your courage. Thank you for helping us to learn to bend without breaking, how we could persevere through difficulty, how the act of learning, just learning to learn, is a gift we will benefit from all our lives. Yes, thank you for teaching us the alphabet, and teaching us the fundamentals of of mathematics. Thank you for all the subjects, all the ways in which you've given us knowledge. But we want to say thank you. Thank you because you make us better. You set us on the path and encourage our steps with markers and glue and hand sanitizer and the truth. You offer the ultimate lesson. Again, that we are loved, that we matter, that our lives do have meaning and purpose. So again, we say thank you, teachers. As you have communicated to us your love, may you know love in return. Will you pray with me? God, you instruct us, you set us on the paths that lead to life. You are ultimate and greatest teacher. Your son, Jesus Christ, came and demonstrated with wisdom, power, with authority, your message of life and truth. For every teacher who pours into a student, we give thanks as they reflect your love, as they share your grace, as they form us, that we might become more loving in return. 
Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for teachers. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, we have the opportunity now to respond to this word by offering our gifts, our tithes to the Lord. There are a lot of different ways that you can do that, and hopefully you can see that at the bottom of your screen. Um, whether you text to give or use the North Cross app, um, go to playlearnshare.org on our give page, or send a check to the church. Know that God um, will use your gift to multiply and uh, serve through the ministries of North Cross and through service here in the Northland of Kansas City. As we continue in this time of worship, let us remember that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God, that you are holy and dearly loved by our Lord.
Friends, as you go forth, may you go forth in the strength and the power of Jesus. May you know yourself as his student. Perhaps most importantly, may you know you are loved. Go and share that good news. Go and be blessed now and always. Amen. As you go, please remember that this is not the only experience or the only opportunity we have to be together. There are a number of online opportunities for you to engage with us here at North Cross. If you're interested in any of the groups or the studies, any of the the opportunities that you're going to see scrolling here in just a moment, or that you could find at playlearnshare.org, please reach out to us. Again, the best way, perhaps the easiest way to do that is just through the North Cross app. Uh, There's other links there that you can also click on, and we're going to invite you to do that so that we could take next steps together. If you've got a teacher in your life, give them a little love today. Go in peace. Amen. This is my surrender.